This is Ken Hans, uh, best storyteller in Texas. I uh, had uh, one of our listeners send in a, a great quote from Warren Buffett. He said, when the tide goes out, you can figure out who's been swimming naked. And, uh, you know, lots of times when business and, and all the economy's doing great, it looks like everyone's doing great. And when it turns, you can find out uh, business-wise who was swimming naked. And so uh, that's a great uh, Warren Buffett quote. My, my other favorite or one of my other favorite Warren Buffett quotes is that he was speaking at the University of Washington, uh, MBA students, and that uh, he, he was talking about different things and started taking questions. And one kid asked a question about, you know, he used a lot of terms, business terms, and did you do micro analysis or macro analysis of uh, Philip Morris when you uh, invested in them? And his answer was no. They were making it for a penny and selling it for a dollar, and it was addictive. And I just thought it worked. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know that politically correctness in this day and time would let you get by with that, uh, that answer. Warren Buffett uh, said not long ago to younger people that if you're going to invest, uh, rather than follow his advice, you might want to, the rapper Jay-Z, you might want to follow his advice. And uh, he has been very successful, but he invests in things that he understands, uh, which are different things than I would understand or Warren Buffett would understand. Warren Buffett always had a, he didn't buy into Microsoft. He and Bill Gates were good friends, but he didn't get on Microsoft's team, you know, early or even mid-level um, because he didn't understand what Microsoft does. He stayed with Dairy Queen and, Washington Post and ABC and Disney and Coca-Cola and things like that. Uh, there was a basketball player at Texas Tech that went on to play in the NBA uh, for 11 years, uh, Tony Batie, uh, very successful, has made a lot of money and hung on to it. And he had a financial advisor and who told him, I'm only going to put you in things that you know and that you've heard of, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Exxon, major companies uh, that we're not going to get in any companies that are exploring gold mines in the Philippines on the fifth week of every July. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of deals out there. Once you make a little money or if somebody's, you know, lucky enough to win the lottery, everyone with any kind of scheme is going to come to you to try to get your money. And, uh, and they're very convincing and, uh, they'll have you looking at maybe buying the Brooklyn Bridge or Golden Gate Bridge or, or you know, some scam like that. And uh, and just stay, a, a good stockbroker is going to, you let them know what you want to do, growth stocks or dividends or whatever. And uh, they're going to try to put you into what you want and that uh, you should be able to, to do well uh, over a long period of time problem you get into in the, in the stock market that I've always found that if you're trying to jump in and out and hit all the the peaks, miss the valleys, uh, you won't hit many of the peaks and you won't miss any of the valleys. Uh, I, I think it's important you make an investment stock and you stay there and just let it ride. One thing I wanted to mention, uh, this fall, I will be teaching a leadership class at Texas Tech. Um, so if you've got any friends, uh, that have kids or grandkids going to Texas Tech, tell them to sign up for the class. It's on, a a, a Monday at one o'clock, uh, last 50 minutes. And I've had some guests. I've had, uh, former governor, uh, Rick Perry and secretary of energy. And he, he did a great job. Uh, Rex Tillerson. I've had Ed Whitaker who uh, did an excellent job. I've had uh, Jerry Rawls, who the business school at Texas Tech is named after. He uh, was a guy that made billions out in California with Finisar, a company he started with a couple other people. And that uh, we talked to him about all kinds of things. We, we've always had uh, uh, two to four speakers uh, a semester. 
and that uh, Ginger Carrick, who was a first Hispanic female flight director at NASA, in charge of all the operations, uh, I've had her speak several times. She does an excellent job. Former mayor of Amarillo, Jerry Hodge, was one of my speakers, did an outstanding job. Jerry's been a little uh, under the weather and uh, is uh, fighting some illness, and, and I wanted to give a shout-out to former Mayor of Amarillo, Jerry Hodge. Great guy, great American. We've got him in our prayers. If they want to sign up, uh, they can sign up with a leadership class. It's BA4100. And uh, if they have any problems, they can ask their advisor. But uh, that should get you in. It's well worth it. There, there's going to be some great people to be speaking. In follow-up last week, we talked about uh, income tax. And I'm, I'm going to, I've got some funny stories on it today. But I want you to remember, the top 1% pay 24% of all taxes, income taxes paid. And if you take the top 20%, they pay 68.8% of all taxes paid. So, um, the you know, it's a myth that they're not paying any taxes. But I went back and looked with the IRS on the reasons. People will file late. They may be a week late. They may be five years late. But they'll provide an excuse. And these are some of the ones. I, I took down some of these excuses really good. One, one was that the dog ate their tax return. I mean, how many kids have used that in school? And they say, well, the dog ate the tax return. That's the reason they didn't file. And uh, that that does not work. I mean, in case you're trying to come up with something new, that one did not work. Uh, one guy claimed, a guy in New York, that he had late filing syndrome. <laughs> and late filing syndrome is it caused him to be depressed and his prom and, and I mean that this this was they had an administrative hearing on it, and his problem was the American Psychiatric Association did not agree that that was a form of uh, of to be considered for for late filing. Um, one person wrote on their report when they uh, filled out their IRS report and sent it in their return they put that they were late because they were in a coma and uh, couldn't fill it out. And, uh, and with some proof from hospital, uh, they were able to get, you know, that, that one took. Um, one of my favorites is a guy wrote in and he said he was on a yacht. You know, he was doing a tour on a yacht and it caught on fire and burned his tax return. <laughs> You know, now, do you think an IRS agent is going to have a lot of sympathy for the guy that was on a yacht and, and had a fire and it burned his tax return? I don't think that that, you know, I, I'd try to come up with something better. I'd just go ahead and pay the penalty, you know, for, for being uh, late. Uh, one person is why, said that his wife always helped him and she'd had a headache for 10 days. And uh, that, I mean, nice try, but uh, that did not uh, work. Uh, probably the very best was a woman wrote in and uh, said that her husband ran off with the CPA and she couldn't get the records. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'd think you'd have to prove that or something, but uh, uh, she lost both, uh, both of them. There was one in uh, Great Britain that said they did not send in the tax return. They got in an argument with their wife and they went to Italy for five years. And so, you know, I mean, that that's, you, these people are creative, uh, but not creative enough. Um, one woman said that, that she did not get her tax return filed on time because it was on her laptop and her husband got mad at her and ran over the laptop. I guess he took the laptop away from her and put it out on the drive and ran over it with the car. Um, there was also a survey that uh, was taken. And it, what would you do uh, rather than have to fill out IRS forms? And that 
49% said they'd rather serve on a jury than fill out their tax return. And look, serving on a jury, uh, a lot of people try to get out of that, but that's something everyone should do. And that uh, uh, when your time comes, uh, you know, just try to make the adjustment. The, the problem gets in if you get stuck on a jury that's a capital murder case or something that lasts two or three months. Uh, that 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 becomes a real problem. Thirty six percent said they'd rather have a talk with their early teenagers about the birds and the bees than fill out the IRS return. I tell you, when my son was about thirteen or fourteen, I told him one day I need to talk to him about the birds and the bees, and he said, "Well, sure. What do you want to know?" <laughs> and I I thought, you know, I, he doesn't need to talk. He'll be okay. I guess one of the most uh, unusual thing. There was 37% said that they would get an IRS tattoo on their arm, on their biceps, if they didn't have to uh, fill out returns in the future, didn't have to mess with it. But the the one that I kind of chuckled at, 22% said they'd give up sex if they didn't have to, you know, a fill out return. And I would think those would be the ones in the 60s, years of age, 70s, 80s. I don't think the 20s and 30s would necessarily, uh, you know, answer in that in that way. And to tell you how bad it is, some people, 10% said they had rather clean uh, toilets and prisons uh, than, uh, than fill out tax returns and pay taxes. There, there are, you can move to different places where you have, uh, uh, you pay a lot less taxes. Uh, you, you, if you live in Puerto Rico for half the year, uh, you pay a substantially less uh, income taxes. Last week, the state of Florida had an unusual situation happen. They had their emergency system set off a call, and it was supposed to be for TV stations, everything but it went to everyone's cell phone and it was 4:45 in the morning. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, that's a mistake that everyone that day when they went to work, they were, they were upset about their 4:45 call. Also in the news, there's a settlement in great Britain, Facebook settled a, a lawsuit of 725 million, but, I don't think anyone's going to get much. Lawyers get a third of that, and the rest of it be split, and somebody might get five dollars or fifty dollars or something like that. But uh, there, there's lawsuits pending uh, here against different computer companies and everything. And if if they if the state wins, they're still not going to win that much. That would go to each individual. You know, people. They look at class actions where you got a class action, you got a class action, a, a class of people that are going to receive the benefits. You see these advertisements on TV, and if you were in or around Camp Lejeune, I, I keep thinking somebody's going to say, if you drove by, you know, if you flew over, you know, they're trying to get their numbers up in the class action. And also, maybe, you know, find somebody that really was injured then. But the more people they have, the the more of a standing they have getting larger numbers. Uh, I think one of the, uh, on class actions, I plan on having a, a gentleman that has filed a lot of class actions and, and uh, uh, on my program sometime in the near future and let him uh, go into explaining uh, what, what all they do. Remote workers, you know, I, I, remote workers did not work for us that much. Uh, it, it was difficult in my law firm. Uh, I was gone for about two weeks, and I just needed my additional help, and we started back at the office, and everybody, everyone did fine. And uh, But the, they did a survey of remote work, workers. 24% admitted to having taken a nap. Uh, while at home, while working. And, and 11% admitted they had sex while working from home. <laughs> you know, And uh, on those two, you think 24% of nap, 11% of sex, you know, it may be the same 11% of part of that 24%. But 
but but they those are the ones that answered uh, and you wondered if if some of the people didn't answer truthfully on it uh, may have been more and but this is the one that really points out the problem of working from 77% read social media post and I, and I think that's right but a big part of them said they do that they sneak in a few minutes when they're at the office as well. Uh, the people that worked at home, when asked if, you know, how much actual time they spent working, uh, they said three to four hours of work. And um, some governments are, are still not back to full, full force. And there's some businesses. The larger the business, the less likely they're back to everyone being in the office. And that's the reason the office space, when these new um, new leases come up. A lot of people are not leasing as much office space as they had to, um, as they had in the past. There was a recent survey about an old wives' tale saying that I thought was pretty good. It said it takes twenty-one days to form a bad habit. You know, I, I don't believe that. And uh, after they did a study, they said that's not correct. I mean, if you had somebody shoot you up with heroin for 21 days, I think you'd, you know, could get hooked on it long before 21. Um, if, if washing your hands, they did say that washing your hands more often for hospitals, that just reminders of that for two or three days uh, increase it. And that uh, that it's that it is not true that it takes twenty one days to create a bad habit or a good habit. Uh, most people will catch on something long before twenty one. The CEO of a furniture company, uh, a lady named Andy Owen, uh, got on to her employees about asking for bonuses and sent something out to them. The only problem was. Somebody went back and looked at the SEC filings and found that she had had a $3.9 million bonus in stock the year before. Here's exactly what she said to the employees. Questions came through about how can we stay motivated if we're not going to get a bonus. Some of them were nice and some of them were not so nice. So I'm going to address this head on. Don't ask about what are we going to do if you don't get a bonus. Get the damn $26 million. Spend your time and your effort thinking about the $26 million we need and not thinking about what you're going to do if we don't get a bonus. All right. I had an old boss who said to me one time, you can visit Pity City, but you can't live there. So people, leave Pity City. Let's get it done. Thank you. Have a great day. $3.9 million that she got, and she's talking to him. You know, get out of Pity City. You know, my only pity would be working for somebody that was like that. There's always recalls on things, and but I saw one the other day that that made that got my attention. They had a recall on 2.2 million sledgehammers, and the head of the sledgehammer was coming off when you were swinging it. That's dangerous, and uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you adhere to that recall if it affects uh, the sledgehammer that you bought recently. One last thing, we're in the last days, really the last uh, five weeks of the Texas legislative session for those of you that live in Texas, and uh, you never know what's going to come up or what you may get blindsided with. Uh, it's a uh, uh, unusual time of year in the legislative process. Process, Now, I go back to what my friend Byron Chapel asked me. Uh, after I got elected to the state Senate, he said, y'all meet 140 days every two years. And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I want you to start meeting two days every 140 years. And uh, I knew right then that he was a conservative fellow and didn't want much government. And uh, he just wanted to be left alone. <laughs>